Russian tensions may be reaching a boiling point. Ukraine President Zelensky says he's been informed Russia will attack Wednesday in an address to the, to the nation. What is the Pentagon, though, saying about all of this? Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby joins me now. Sir, thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, the, the, the latest on where we are right now, uh, I, obviously things are moving fast, uh, but we just heard where this uh, the latest troop deployment caught some of the soldiers off guard. Well, right, and we're very proud of those 82nd Airborne soldiers. They are a high readiness uh, uh, unit already. Uh, they are. They were. We put them on a shorter tether to deploy heightened alert uh, a few weeks ago. I think you guys remember that. Uh, so uh, they certainly knew, as that soldier said, that it was a possibility. Uh, but uh, we believed it was the right thing to go ahead and get them over there uh, to join the 1,700 of their uh, of their fellow soldiers in that in that same unit. Today, uh, Ukraine's president uh, said uh, in a series of, uh, of announcements or posts that this Wednesday looks like it could be today. And now, one said he might have been joking, and another one uh, felt like he was really serious about that. But where are we with respect to the timeline, the potential invasion uh, of Ukraine by Russia? We've said uh, for quite some now, time now, Charles, that uh, it could be any day now. And, uh, and what I said earlier today is uh, that he could move with little to no warning. Uh, so it could, it could clearly be really any time now. And I, I wouldn't get into specific uh, predictions here. It would be, be difficult to, to put a date certain on it. Uh, but uh, we have been sharing our information uh, and the intelligence that we've been getting uh, on uh, what we're seeing the Russians do along that border with Ukraine, with U our Ukrainian partners, uh, with Ukrainian leaders, so that they have the same information that we do. There was also a report out earlier today uh, that the, the Russia's uh, the defense secretary, Lavrov, uh, was committed to giving diplomacy a little bit more time. Uh, that report seemed to have faded away as the day has gone on. Any update on that? Well, he said it publicly, uh, and certainly we welcome those kind of sentiments. In fact, we've been saying the same thing, Charles. We, we still believe that there should be time and space for diplomacy to work. We still believe here at the Pentagon that that's the right way forward here, to de-escalate this thing and find a diplomatic path forward. So, again, we welcome Mr. Lavrov's comments, and we hope that, that he's sincere about that. Uh, the problem is that uh, what they say and what they do aren't exactly uh, the same. Right. We continue to see him add to his forces along that border with Ukraine, even just over the course of the last 24 to 48 hours, he has increased his military capability should he want uh, to uh, invade Ukraine again. Yeah, and to that point, uh, if Russia invades Ukraine this week, what would the U.S. response be? Is there a scenario where our troops uh, would be deployed to Ukraine? The president has been crystal clear that U.S. troops will not be fighting in Ukraine. He has also been crystal clear that should there be another incursion uh, inside Ukraine by Russian forces, uh, that they will be met with swift consequences, mostly of an economic nature, of course. And he has been very clear about the fact that we would be willing uh, to put in place uh, economic measures uh, of a severity that we have not done before. And it won't just be the United States, Charles. Other nations will also, uh, we, we have indications certainly that they will also try to hold Russia accountable uh, through economic measures as well. So this is not going to go well for, uh, for Mr. Putin should he decide to invade again. And the other thing is that what he's seeing is a more unified West, a more unified NATO. Uh, he has done exactly what he said he didn't want to see, which is what a, a strong NATO on his Western flank. Uh, he, the, all of these actions, all of this right. uncertainty, all of this bellicosity has actually unified the alliance. John, what of the NATO response force is activated? Well, again, I won't get ahead of NATO. That's going to be after a North Atlantic Council decision. Uh, but if it's activated, uh, it is a highly re uh, ready force of 40,000 members. We have a contribution to that in the United States. And as you think you know, a couple of weeks ago, Secretary Austin put 8,500 troops uh, on a heightened alert posture. Those troops are largely dedicated to the NATO response force. So. If it gets activated, what I can assure you is that the United States contribution to the NATO readiness force will be ready to go. Speaking of uh, Defense Secretary uh, Austin, uh, I understand he's set to travel to Europe tomorrow where he's going to be visiting troops, also meeting with NATO allies. What's the message that he's going to convey on this trip? The biggest message he's going to convey on this trip in Brussels, in Poland, and Lithuania is that the United States takes our commitment to NATO very seriously, specifically the Article 5 collective defense requirement. It's, it's a serious requirement. It's, it's a big commitment in, inside the alliance, and the United States will take it seriously. 
A lot has been made, of course, about the sanctions, possible sanctions, should they go on before or presumably after. And the centerpiece of that, of course, is the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Some concern uh, in America by some lawmakers that maybe Germany will not be willing to cut off the pipeline. Uh, it's, it's still winter. It's a it, it would be a major source. Obviously, mm. Russia is a major source of natural gas to them anyway. Uh, are you are you assured? Are you confident that Germany would go with President Biden, who on on February 7th made the promise that the pipeline would be shut? Uh, I would point you back to exactly what the president said. Should there be another invasion, Nord Stream 2 will not go forward. Uh, and he had good discussions with uh, Chancellor Schultz about this uh, the other day at the, uh, at the, uh, the White House. Excuse me. Uh, it, it will not go forward. And, and look, I mean, I think um, we all recognize uh, that, uh, uh, that there's a lot at play here. Uh, but the president was, again, very clear. John, also uh, an emerging narrative is that uh, maybe this will be a minor incursion, not to, uh, uh, you know, uh, not, not to make light of uh, the comment that was made not long ago by President Biden, but certainly to, to occupy a nation, uh, particularly one the size of Ukraine, is not easy. Uh, they've got 260,000 uh, soldiers and other people willing to fight, but that there could be a strategic uh, calling out of certain land there, uh, not unlike uh, Crimea. Yeah. If that were the plan, what, I mean, is there anything we could do about it? Ultimately, there was nothing we could really do about Crimea. Well, look, we're, we're not going to put American troops uh, on the ground in Ukraine to fight. The president's been clear about that. It is unclear uh, what Mr. Putin will do. Uh, certainly with the forces that he has arrayed on that border, and there's a lot of them, well north of 100,000, and they keep adding to it every day and keep increasing their capabilities, they have a lot of options available to them. They could, they could go in in a large conventional way uh, and try to, you know, surround Kiev. They could do something more tailored, more, more small, like you suggested, maybe uh, an, an, another action in, in the Donbass or, or down south. They could do all of it together. Right. It's just not exactly clear what he's going to do, but the president has been clear. Any incursion, no matter what the size, any incursion inside Ukraine is going to trigger economic consequences. Are you worried about a Russian cyber attack uh, on, on America here? We are constantly watching uh, what the Russians are capable of in, in cyber operations. Uh, we take the resilience and the security of our own infrastructure, cyber infrastructure, very seriously. Uh, you know, here at the Pentagon, uh, our networks get uh, attacked every single day. So it's something we're always focused on and always watching for. And we'll certainly be mindful of that uh, going forward here with Russia and their capabilities. It is certainly not, you know, from your last question, we were talking about his options. Certainly one of the options he has available to him as well inside Ukraine is to start this off with some sort right. of cyber offensive operation. Again, we'll be watching for that. John, I got 20 seconds, uh, but th there's a report, there are reports that President Xi gave a tacit uh, okay for this uh, to invasion to happen during the Olympics. Uh, are you, how worried are you about this combination of China and Russia, how tightly they're becoming, uh, their relationship? Yeah, look, we don't think they're strong, strong allies. These are not two countries that uh, that always play well together. Uh, but uh, the comment by Xi, that statement they issued er in early February, uh, was sort of tacit approval for mm -hmm. Russian aggression against Ukraine. And as I said earlier in the in, in the day, that's deeply alarming. John Kirby, thank you so much for being so uh, for for your time and, and the questions and answers. We really appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.